Hey, what's up everyone? If you're anything like me and you own Complete 11, you like to use the drum kits included with Complete 11. That includes at the Abbey Road drums, the studio drummer, but sometimes you don't want to mix them from within the instrument. You'd like to mix them in the mix console. And today I'm going to show you how to do exactly that. Okay, so we're here in Cubase and I'm going to add an instrument track of Contact 5. Okay, and once that's loaded, we're going to need to add a drum library. I think we'll just use one of the Abbey Road ones, I think. So there's these ones that come with Complete, and I'm using Complete 11 and Contact 5 for the purposes of this tutorial. Just so you know, um, if you're using the new Contact 6, this may not be as applicable to you, but, but for Contact 5, it is a little confusing, so uh, we'll get into it today. So I'm gonna add just Abbey Road 80s drummer, black kit full, doesn't really matter. Cool. So now we know it's making sound. And let me just get this so that we can see it here. Okay, the first thing we're going to want to do is take a look at the mixer section of the Abbey Road 80s drummer to see how many outputs we're going to need. So we take a look, and these close mics are all mono mics. So there's one, two, three, four, five, six, seven, eight, nine. Okay. And there's overhead, that's probably stereo. Room, that's probably stereo. Uh, chomps stereo. Let's solo that. I love that. Okay, um, so that's a stereo. Then there's a chomp mono. So uh, one thing you got to realize is that uh, Abbey Road Drummer it applies presets. You know when you open up the kit. So whether it's pop or heavy metal, and these are EQ and compression and transient shaping and tape saturation. So I think that one thing that you might need to remember is if you wanna mix this fully in the mix console, you'll have to turn off all this processing for every channel. So we can do that by going through and control clicking everything, which will set all the gains back to zero. Okay. And then for each individual track, we'll have to turn off all the effects. So if there's any lights down here, um, you know, just make sure you click them. And then they'll be bypassed. So Done and done. So it looks like we'll need three total stereo outputs for the overheads, the rooms, and the chomp. And then we'll need one, two, three, four, five, six, seven, eight, nine, ten mono outputs. So in order to do this, we're going to need to start within contact by clicking on this icon right here and uh, opening up our output section. Okay, so what we see now is we just have one stereo output. Everything's being routed to the basically the master out. So here in contact, um, you're gonna wanna hit settings and you'll see your outputs here. There's master stereo one, same thing basically. So we know that we want three stereo outputs for the chomp, the room, and the overheads. So we want to add three channels and we'll put them on stereo one and we'll delete existing channels. So we hit okay. And there we go, we have one, two, three, four, and five, six. And if you remember, we want 10 mono channels for the close mics. So we'll add, and so number of channels will be single because it's mono. And we'll need 10 channels, so. And for these, we'll actually want to uh, assign it to kit unassigned, contact unassigned. And the reason why is we can actually check our outputs here on the VST instrument panel. And all the auxes are stereos, and all the unassigneds are monos. So if we do unassigned, we'll get 10 mono tracks. Uh, 
And so in order to do that, we don't need to delete existing channels. We can just hit OK. And we'll have all the channels we need. Now, we know what these uh, three stereos are. We want them to be overheads and room and CMP stereo. OK, and then we just go down the mixer line, kick, snare, hat, tom one, tom two, tom three, tom four, clap, tambourine, and CMP mono. Cool. Okay, now the next thing would be to assign each of these to the appropriate output. But if you notice, that output's not available even though we've created it. And the reason why, and this is probably one of the most confusing things, but you see up here on your top bar where they have this exclamation point? Well, I mean, how are you supposed to know this? But you have to click this exclamation point for the outputs to take effect. So let's do that. And now, oh, there they are. So we'll, the kick goes to kick. The snare, of course, goes to snare. Hi-hat goes to hi-hat. Tom, obviously. So this is just a click fest to get your routing right. Tom three to Tom three. Tom four to Tom four. Clap. Tambourine. CMP mono. Then the overhead here, overhead, room, here, room, and then the stereo. Excellent. So now, you can see the contact mixer is doing it right. So next thing we need to do is have this show up in our mix console. So what we do is we go to our outputs and we know that we have three, the first three stereos, and then one, two, three, four, five, six, seven, eight, nine, ten. And before you know it, here they are. So aux one should be the overheads, I think. Overheads. And then room. Oh, wait, no, no. The instrument track actually becomes the overheads. This is the room. And then this is CMP stereo. Excellent. Then we have kick. Snare. I'm doing this from memory, but I'm pretty sure I know what order they're in. And then the toms, tom one, tom two, tom three, tom four, uh, tambourine, right? Cla is it clap and then tambourine? Let's find out. Um, 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 um. Yeah, it's clap and then tambourine and then CMPM. So come back. Clap. Tam. CMPM. And with that, you have the full drum kit uh, in your mix console. And you can see the audio outs. Oh, but uh, the first one has to be, because the instrument lives on this, you need to have this one selected for sound to come out. So you see, uh, now you can mix things like if you wanted to add, I don't know, uh, a, a third party delay.
to the snare drum. You could do that now, which you couldn't do if you were mixing it in contact. And so the drum kit really becomes uh, mixable uh, in the mix console, and it does take a little work, so I would suggest uh, maybe saving this into a template or something. Now, there's another way to do this, and it, you won't be able to mix it within the mix console, but you can mix it uh, sort of similarly. What it will do is it's called MIDI Dissolve, and we'll just add another instance of contact here. And we'll add a drum kit, Abbey Road 70s drummer. We'll just add the light one, I suppose. And let's just put in a groove here into the arrangement window. Okay, so we have this groove. Well, we can just do something called MIDI Dissolve. With the events selected, you go up to MIDI and you sit, say Dissolve Part based on pitches. And what happens is that, as you can see here, there's a new instance of contact for each pitch. So this C1 will be the kick drums. So you could go through and label all of these. The only difference is that you're not actually mixing it like you would a drum kit. What you're getting here is the kick as it's heard, if we look at the mixer section, you're getting the kick basically through the overheads too. So you're getting this kick sound of all of these mics. So you don't actually have as much granular control if you do MIDI dissolve because you're not getting the room mics to be able to play around with or the overhead mics to be able to play around with independently of the individual instrument hits. But you could do MIDI dissolve. But for my money, the way that I like to do it is with this, and because it's such a laborious process to set up, I always like to save this type of thing in a template, uh, in a folder track or something, and reuse it. Um, but, but I think you can actually save it from within contact. Uh, yeah, save output section preset as then you can recall it. You don't have to do as much uh, much work. You just need to do the quick routing. But yeah, it's a, it's a little bit of a pain in the ass, but it's kind of nice to know that it doesn't matter what library you're using. If you're using contact, you can route those outs and see them in the mix console and mix them as if they were individual audio tracks. So that's all I got for you today. I hope that this has been useful. If you enjoyed it or you learned something, feel free to drop a like or subscribe to the channel and take care of yourselves, everyone. Peace.